So right now I am sitting in a 1999 Dodge 3500 Ram wagon and it's my new project. I'm really excited. I'm going to start fighting fires again. I need somewhere to live, so I'm building this into a camper van. Uh, it came from a really big family, lots of kids, so it's definitely been abused. You can see paneling ripped off, but it's a big 15-passenger van, and I've got some really ambitious goals for so it. So this van is a mess. Popcorn from all the road trips. Some good times have been had in this van, but... First things first, I've got to rip everything out. Although cosmetically there are some issues, I chose this van because mechanically it's in great condition. It's got a strong engine and it's the 3500 so it can handle the extra weight I will be adding to this van. So I've got the majority of the cosmetics out. Um, the van's looking in pretty great condition. Good metal, not much rust. I don't see any major problem areas. The back here has some rust. But none of it's going through or anything, but I'll fix it up before. I got all the seats out, and these have to be like 75 pounds of pop, so I'm really excited because the van's lost a lot of weight now. I've got the insulation, I've been getting the wood, I still need some stuff, but I've got this garage right now because I'm renovating this house, but the van doesn't fit in it, so instead I'm out in the driveway in the cold. But today's mostly just going to be cleaning. I really want to start with a nice clean slate. So I went and vacuumed, but I'm just going to start scrubbing, clean it all. Clean everything so I have a nice clean slate to start with and then do rust removal, rust repair, and then let's get a floor in, let's get a high top in. So I'm just going to use Rust-Oleum uh, to spray on all the exposed metal now. I've got the heater going back here to try to get the temperature higher because it should be 50, 60 degrees and outside right now is negative. But I'm not too worried about it because the rust really isn't that bad. The only significant damage I could find anywhere on the van was right in this wheel well. And at some point, something had banged it, so there's a little bit of separation in the metal. So right here, I'm just using a fiberglass mixture. It's pretty straightforward. You get some short strand fiberglass and then a hardener. Mix it all up together. Place it on wherever you want to cover up. And it hardens up real good and it's a solid. It's not going to let any moisture in let any cold drafts in, that kind of things I want to avoid. For the majority of my insulation, I'm using foam insulation. Uh, it's very lightweight and easy to work with. So I've got this side done, so there's two layers, so there's two inches of foam here, and then up here is just one inch, because that's all that really fits. Um, so yeah, it's not the prettiest, but all I'm worried about is, is either styrofoam or foam in every single nook and cranny. Because this is all going to get covered up anyways, it doesn't matter how it looks. For all the weird, strange voids you find inside of vehicles, they use foam insulation to fill it up so everything's nice and tight and insulated. Okay, so I'm going to be attaching this wood to the frame of the van, and this is going to help support the high top as well as the rest of the body. And the first video I made, I have my beautiful wife, or now wife, she was girlfriend at the time, helping me. But she's at work, so I replaced it with some clamps, and they're doing a great job as well. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to drill a hole through, and then I'm going to put these bolts in. It's going to be the bolt, washer, washer, and one of these tension washers, and another bolt. And the tension washer is because there's a lot of vibrations in vehicles when they're driving, so it's going to help hold it real snug and not move, because I don't want like this hole back flying off on the highway. So what I'm doing now is these are those angle pieces I just cut. And these are actually the seatbelt receivers. It had a seatbelt going down. But I'm reusing them because they have nice uh, bolt holes in the back. And I'm tightening the piece of wood in. You really can't over insulate a van. So here I am adding more insulation. I end up covering up this back window. So because of that, I left the gap open so I can still check my blind spot when I'm driving just for safety reasons. So next is going to be the floor insulation. A little bit of felt fabric, and this will help with the sound dampening as well as a little bit of insulation, not too much. And then we'll go with half inch of this insulation. So that'll be an R, R value of 2.7 plus that, plus a subfloor of this. I'm a little worried this is too thin, but I'm trying to cut down on weight, so I'll give this a go. The insulation is extremely light, so I'm not worried about that, though. 
So that'll be the three layers of floor, and on top of that will be the actual flooring. So I guess there'll be four layers of flooring. So in this the right here, I was able to buy this old table, and this is going to become the table inside the van as well as the bed. It's pretty cool because it's all piston-driven or hydraulic. So if I pull this up, it goes... Pshaw. So that'll be the table configuration, and then when I wanted the bed, I'll push it down. But I need to cut this up, and I'm going to be bolting this piece of metal to the bottom of the van. So this, just the hole, can I can just have a little hole in the van, and I'll go down and sit inside there. So here I'm cutting out the hole for the shaft of the table to go through. And then the base of the table now looks like this configuration. And then I got some pieces of rubber that I use as gaskets so I can have a nice tight fit without having any vibration issues. Here's the first layer of insulation that I'm putting in. And so this is what the top looks like. Not the most symmetrical, but it works. So don't worry about it. Uh, this is, would be the bed configuration and when I wanted the table configuration. This thing is strong. It's kind of scary how strong the hydraulic is. So this is the floor with the insulation in. I then tape off all the seams and this just helps hold everything together as well as prevent insulation bridges. And the next thing to do is gonna to be to put the subfloor on. The subfloor is just five millimeter subfloor uh, plywood and that's going in right now. And then on top of that, I'll put in the actual floor. So it is a beautiful day, which means it is time to cut this roof off. I'm just gonna be using a jigsaw because I got a disc grinder, but I don't want to be shooting sparks everywhere. The jigsaw worked surprisingly well for cutting the roof off. Uh, it did wear out my blades. So I used about four metal blades total but it came off very clean and easy. I highly recommend that over a disc grinder. So here I'm beginning to build the structure that's gonna hold up the high top in a new roof. And I'm using wood joinery here instead of screws and nails, just because wood joinery is gonna hold up better over time with vibrations. And it's just a better, nice snug fit and nothing's gonna be vibrating around and getting unscrewed or something like that. These are my walls, and I use the same technique of wood joining just to get nice, solid, strong joints that aren't going to have any issues down the road. Here I'm creating notches, and these notches are for the roof uh, beams to go into. Same thing, nice snug fit. And then I ended up bolting this to multiple places. So here I'm bolting it to the top of the frame. Here I'm screwing it into the walls. And then I also bolt it to the walls as well as bolt it to the floor. So it's really connected in, I don't know, over 20 different locations to the actual body of the van. I end up adding a lot more supports diagonally, horizontally, just to really reinforce everything. And this is my first layer of many layers of waterproofing. So instead of trying to cut it to shape on the ground, I decided the best way to cut my walls were going to be just to cut it in position. So I'm putting it up against the van and then getting a nice smooth cut. And then I do that on everything, and then after that, I end up just grinding all the edges. So I've got one nice seamless edge that I can easily waterproof instead of having a bunch of overlapping gaps and things like that. Before I board up the back, I made some angles, and these are just going to help keep this whole thing square. But they're pretty simple. They just slide right in. Oh, I made it a little bit snug, which is exactly what I want. There For we go. waterproofing the van, I used several layers of roof paint. So this is the kind of paint used to waterproof flat roofs. So this is what it looks like now. Uh, I had to put these here because that's where the plywood ends. I haven't screwed these in yet, but there's a seam right there. So that's just so I can screw both sides to it. So there's nothing flapping up. 
And then I've got one more support here because I'll be breaking the wind. Don't want that to get bent. And then back on this side, same thing on this side. And I'll add a little piece right here just so if, if anything ever happens, this doesn't slide back instead of the piece blocking it right there. Back to more insulation, using the same products for this, uh, one inch foam insulation and then any gaps I can find I'm spraying with spray foam. And then adding just more supports everywhere just so everything stays square. So before I waterproof everything and assemble, I just wanted to show you guys exactly how this is all fitting together. So the plexi is going to fit in these grooves here. Once that's in, these guys are going to slide right over it and be attached on there, kind of trapping it in there. Same on that side and in the back we'll have supports holding it back here. But the reason I'm doing this is I'm leaving the plexi about a fourth of an inch away from this so it has room to expand and contract on top of here. Because plexi will do that and I don't want it cracking or getting damaged when I do that. And then up here in the front, similar thing, plexi goes all the way up to that front and then this guy slides right over and traps it all in place. And um, the reason I did it like this is at first I was going to bolt it with some fancy rubber uh, bolts and stuff. But bolts and holes just create weaknesses and I was just scared it's going to crack on that bolt. So by doing it like this, um, there's no bolt, no point of weakness. It's all kind of just grabbed and stuck in there real good. For the see-through roof, I am using 3 8 inch cell cast acrylic. So I'm doing the same as all the other edges that I've done, um, sealing the seam with caulking as well as rubbing the caulking into the end grain because that's where you're going to have the most water problems, your end grains. At the start I had some minor leaking problems so I chemically welded on another acrylic rod. You can see it here, it's welded onto the very edge and then I filled in all gaps with a marine grade adhesive and ever since I did that I haven't had any issues. The marine adhesive allows it to still expand and contract while maintaining a good seal on the whole acrylic. And this is me doing the jump on the roof test and it's passing the test just fine. So this is what the front of the van looks like. Um, I've got it bolted to the actual van up front as well as back here. Uh, I've got it all sealed internally along all these edges as well as externally. So if the external seals fail, the internal fails, uh, internal seals should still prevent any moisture from coming in. Uh, I got one inch insulation, same as everywhere else, and then whatever gaps I could find, I put spray foam insulation in it. Um, I haven't insulated this one yet because this is where my vent is going to go for the sealing vent. So I got to put that in as well as my solar panel wires and stuff. Initially, I'm installing a 100 watt solar panel. Uh, I don't have much power needs. I'm not trying to run a fridge or anything, so 100 watts should be plenty for my needs. I'll be running the solar panel into the van, down to a charge controller, into my battery, then to my fuse box, and then to all my items. But I can talk about that more in my next video, part two. Next thing to do for the exterior is my roof vent. Uh, I just gotta cut a hole in the ceiling and install the roof vent. I'm using my trusty jigsaw for this as well. Cutting out the hole and then, oops, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, but and then marking everything, waterproofing everything very well. That's, if you haven't noticed, that's the theme of building something like this is waterproof well. Not just a lot, but do it smart, use the right products so that you're not running into issues down the road. I kind of learned this kind of the hard way in some areas and then I switched to the marine grade adhesive sealant and that stuff costs a bit more but it's most definitely worth it. It's great for waterproofing and it's, it's not fun when you have to stress about leaks so if you just use the right products you can avoid most of that. That will conclude part one of the video. Uh, if you want to see how I do the interior, my backsplash, my electrical, that kind of fun stuff, make sure you stick around to watch part two of the video.